while I assemble these bearings. So we got all the rods here for the engine, for the turbo, and uh, install all these nice bearings. So just line up the tang with the tang and situate it. Yeah, rock them back and forth a little bit. Get them set, situated in the saddle. Line up the tang with the tang there. Yeah, you can see this coating on there. It's like this gray matte coating. This is what it normally would look like if it didn't have that coating, but it does. It's all line to line stuff. Back and forth, get it in there. And then when you actually assemble the rod, you line up the number on the big end half and the number on the rod itself those line up and that's how you know you got your rod together correctly so there you go there's one probably fast forward through all the rest did you put a new cutter in it well it's just a matter of time before you break one of those pretty much. Those are the most finite of finite tools. Parting tools is what I'm talking about. Breaking off parting tools is really easy on a lathe. I guess just a massive amount of force, probably. Any little cattywampusness. It might also just be that the material right there wasn't as nice. It didn't chip away as nicely and so it just dug in. Yeah. So this is, uh, all the bearings are in. Now, you're gonna check the clearances on all of them. You could just do one at a time. You could just do one rod and check the clearance on every single journal, but it, I don't know. It's better because all these are, they have different coatings, quote unquote. I mean, like, technically they're not all the same, so why not do them all? Uno. Mm-hmm. And there's number uno. Number uno. So how do you want to do this? You want to, you want me to hold it down below? I'm thinking we're going to put it here and I'm going to rest it on the... Oh, on the, on the surface back there? Mm-hmm. You want to put that on the, yeah, on the bearing there and then install it? If it's, it's going to stay? If it stays, yeah. Emphasis on the if. And don't worry about that noise over there. That's just a uh, cleaner running. I think cleaning. we're going to put something oh, yeah. wet on there. Okay. Put a little yeah, touch so of assembly lube to keep it put. Cool. Because everything's going to be sideways. Won't take up enough clearance to matter here. You don't think so? No. And the tang is up, so numbers up. So what numbers up? Yeah. What range is this? Is this um? That yeah, one? of course Look it is. That. Of course, why wouldn't it be that one? Why wouldn't it be the one that's just sitting out right there? That we had used to take this apart initially. That we had used to take this apart initially. Yeah, exactly. And then you always want to line the tangs up. So if the tang is up on one side, like this is, which is also numbered as number one, then the tang on the opposite side needs to be up. Don't ever reverse tang. Oh, I, did I, I think I mentioned before down. that you're supposed to line the numbers up, but there are usually aren't numbers on, right? Oh yeah, no, there so usually you are them? numbers. Oh, there are. These are already pre-numbered. Are there some of them not? Sometimes, yeah. There's not numbers? Sometimes. I guess it depends on the rod. Of course, if it's a Corvair rod like this, a stock rod. Okay, so now I'm gonna torque these. And these get 26 foot-pounds. 26. So you can let go. Count them and weep. These rods had already been rebuilt with ARP bolts. Somebody had had that part yeah. of, the, at least the top end off this engine. Yeah. And uh, they did rebuild the rods. But they didn't split the case. They didn't put, split the case. And, This will be uh, copacetic. Okay. Oh, 26 seems like a lot. Mm, that's what they call for. It's an ARP bolt, though. The whole crank is going to come out of here. Oh yeah, we're done. I forgot. I always forget that it's just you you crank it down and then you're done. It's okay. Now, I was like, why are you taking it apart? <laughs> okay, hold on to that crank again. 
Oh yeah. There we go. So that is that. Ah. ah, look at that. Okay. So there's your mark. So let's see okay. what we have. So there's or width. Now we look at the American side, not the metric side. That's right, it's not square, but yeah, one and three quarters. One and a half. One and a half. Mm-hmm. Wow. One and a half to one and three quarters. It's pretty awesome. We'll do number two. Mm -hmm. I said yesterday on the other, on the mains, that it's really important to do on the Corvair. It's actually important to do on an Amber engine. You don't want to just assume that all the stuff is where it needs to be. Yeah. Uh, a very good friend of ours, which is going to see this, many of you guys know, uh, has an engine that he put together years ago. That is low oil pressure. And so now he's got to pull it back apart. And, uh, put, <laughs> a, put a set of main bearings in it, unfortunately. And I'm not going to say who that is, but he knows who he is. He knows. He knows what he did. So this is one. Yeah. We need a place to set these finished. We're running out of room here. I hope you guys like these shorter form well i don't know if the short is the right term but just like one step kind of videos where you're just seeing what we're doing here it's a lot easier for me to edit it together because otherwise it's several days worth of stuff and i'm cutting out a bunch of random things and i have to put it all together these had the wrong nuts. nuts these are the had the had the no these are arp bolts but they were the ones from clark's and they they clark's oh. comes with the wrong nut it's actually for a small block chevy yeah it's not for uh, and what the nut doesn't the the, the socket doesn't fit correctly Oh, you, it's, it's nearly impossible. It's nearly impossible to, uh, to get a, a wrench on it when you're trying to assemble the engine in the crankcase. Yeah. Cause the, the rod in this area right here, see, I'm, I got, this is a 12 point and this socket is a three eighths, which goes all the way down on there. If you had that big ass nut on there and try to put <laughs> a half inch socket it on there, hit. it hits here. So you, the socket only goes on probably less, less than halfway yeah like an eighth of an inch or something it's really idiotic and uh so it's really hard to get a wrench in there and to get that thing tight <laughs> so stupid to torque it up and then immediately take it apart yeah this is already off okay very very gentle very weird looking see there's like it's, a it's like a missing gap in the in the assembly loop there but look at that look at there. the width again it's perfect it is perfect again it's uh one and three quarters point zero point zero zero one seven or probably it's not two and it's not one and a half so it's right in let's split the middle so that's two uh, out of two we're uh we're cooking with gas this is a yeah pretty primo hold on a second Okay, well, I don't know why the beginning of this video is mono and the rest of it's gonna be Terio, but I don't know. Final Cut camera randomly decides to not work right. Oh, something's done over there. Okay, so tang up. The, the, this is on number three. Remember, these are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, because this side here, if this is rolled over right, will <laughs> yeah, be number yeah. one. One, two, three, so it's all odds on one side, all evens on the other. Yeah, we got stereo audio. Nice things up, things up. Always double check everything. Always double check. Can't be too. It's very fast to actually put it on. Mm hmm. Especially when it's just not. This so side's got a gap down here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should put our tools up there instead of we have no room. Well we can move that breaker bar. We need a breaker bar right now. We're halfway done. I'd like to come up with some other kind of means of doing these. That does not include holding it in the in the case like this. Maybe a maybe mount the the crank on the on a fixture and have it rigid 
Mm-hmm. Was not centered, but it doesn't matter. No, we still get a, looks like the same. They're all perfecto. Should I keep showing the, the camera the thing? Yeah, we're right there. Eh, that's right. We're there. still the same. It's the same as all the rest of them. Well, I'll show it at the end. I'll do, a, I'll do a, a pan over or something at the end. Of course, when you buy this from some one of the online speed shops, you know the ones. You know the ones. When you do enough engines, you got to buy about half a dozen packs of each. And they've got different thicknesses mm -hmm. or different different uh, clearance clearances you want to check. Yeah. This is the one to three thousand. They have other clearances or thicknesses for different different things you're going to do. So pay attention when you order this stuff. It does work. Of course, a bore gauge is probably as good. I'm probably better actually. The one thing a bore gauge cannot tell you is the the contour. The no, difference in not contour really. between yeah. the two surfaces. This can tell you that. Yeah. Which is really interesting. So when you see it like like change the width of it across the entire thing, that means yeah. that the contour of the two surfaces are actually there's a little variation. There's a little variation. Particularly with something like this where we've done the yeah. the spray coating on the clearances to bring this into a yeah, of course. Very usable. Yeah. And see, those coatings are not perfectly exact, but they're not they're, supposed to be. They're designed to be, to literally wear away. To to the running point. To the running, yeah. To not the, just wear away and then no, no, no. To, the, to the running, to the, the running clearance. clearance. Yeah. yeah. And uh, which is what's really cool about these is that's a really cool function to have. Yeah. <clears throat> Plus, they uh, they do like oil, and oil likes them. Mm -hmm. So oil will um, it gets impregnated in it. It's a type of a polymer plastic, of some sort, and oil gets in the material, and then actually helps with the lubrication. So yeah, this crank had wear in it, but it was fully round. I checked it in multiple positions. And since an undersized bearing isn't available, I thought, you know, let's do this coating. Yeah. Bring it into the correct clearance. And I'd already checked all the stuff with the bore gauge and told the line to line what size I wanted. See, this shows, oh, we were by the hole. Oh. I thought I had moved it enough. That's okay. Well, you we can still, still get a see, width. You can still get a width on one side of it. We screwed up, guys. We ruined it. It's between, yes, yeah, between one and a half and Two thousand, so we're we're bowling a three hundred percent, three hundred percent bowling. Three hundred, <laughs> not percent. Been too many years since I bowled. Batting, uh, yeah, batting average three hundred. Yeah. Oh, a thousand. Batting a thousand. I think it's true. We are batting a thousand technically. Yeah. A real a real average would be like three hundred. So batting a thousand. I got two more to do, and they're, they're going to come in, and then that's not viable. Okay. Soiled it. Soiled it. That's where they sell it by the foot. Yeah. That is why they sell it by the foot. Kind of informational, kind of... Yeah. It, it just else. winds up... It's just... Building an engine is tedious. And I know there's yeah. a lot of guys go, you're going to charge me what? Well, yeah, this is why. If you really want it done right... Not a little bit I mean, of work. There are guys that'll just buy parts, stick your engine together with whatever they bought, don't check anything, I'm sure it'll fire up and run. How long is it going to last, though? Yeah. Is it going to last for, you know... Another 100,000 miles? 100,000 miles or beyond? Like, all the new cars are well beyond 100,000 miles. Unless yeah. it's poorly maintained. But pretty much... I mean, these last a long time. They do. And it's amazing they do with the crappy oils that they had in them yeah, back in yeah. the day. And the extreme heat that they actually live in. Uh... It's amazing they last that long. Yeah. I can't imagine if, if, if they were designed now and CNC machined and, you well, know, it'd all be, the, It'd be a Porsche and then it would, it would last. All the bearing stuff time. is a, um, you know, you can hand fit bearings. You got half a thou shells you can change out and come up with perfect bearing clearances everywhere. I wonder what kind of clearance new Porsches are made. Like that one right there. Oh, that's a Ferrari. That's a Ferrari. Oh, they're they're pretty tight. All the new stuff is very tight. Cause they, they hold the tolerances. So. But there's still clearance. I mean, it's not like a F1 car or something crazy. Yeah, no, it still has. 
Dude, that's crazy. One and zero, a half. Zero tolerance on an F1 car? Negative tolerance. Interference Actually, Interference fit on that. There you go. It was all wedged up in there. Oh, that's the same. Yeah, I know. Every single one is exactly the same, so it's not very interesting, actually. No. It's just kind of, just kind of what it is. Yeah, it's the same. That's really, that's really cool. And these are all different bearings on different rods. It's not even like... No, these are all these new are bearings. All individual rods are doing. It's not like we're doing the same rod in every single one, so, oh, therefore, oh, it's got to be the same, of course. Yeah, but these are all individually sprayed. Yeah. With the coating. It's just outrageous that they're that accurate and no we are not uh we didn't get this pro bono from line to line no uh we, we're not we, sponsored by them we're not sponsored by them uh, they didn't pay us anything they didn't give us to free we no, paid no. full pop for these yeah but i have to say that it's really nice it's extremely nice let's see how it runs and it's a nice way to and uh we also <laughs> i also sent the uh this is another thing that's going to increase the the oil pump oil housing. Pressure. Okay, this is going to this is going to maintain a really good oil pressure because it's at factory clearances. Yeah. The other thing is, I sent the oil pump housing to them. They also have a service where they will apply the coating to your new gears in your oil pump and the housing, the housing itself, and then hand fit the thing. That's nuts. So we aren't going to get any new oil pump housings. I don't no. think. Anybody's gonna make them. I'm not planning on casting any new ones. The machining is stupid. Yeah, too much machining. As far as the design. Yeah. And I'm just not gonna, it's just what you get is what you get. So, so I started, I found out that they did the coating on the pumps, so I decided, well, hell, I'll, uh, I'll send a pump over there and see what, they, what happens. They come up with. And, uh, and it's really nice. Oh my God. It's it, it got rid of all the scratches that were inside the, the pump. Super smooth. So it's going to maintain higher oil pressure throughout its operating temperature range. One more check. We'll call it a day. I'm putting the uh, I'm putting that brass drift away already. I know it's gonna be great. Wow. Oh yeah. That's it's, I mean just perfect again. To take a crank that's but yeah. polished out, it measured Wiped up and polished out perfect. Okay, guys, that's perfect. We're gonna wipe this down. I'll do a little. I'll do a little oh. closer. Number one. Number two. Three. Four. This is in the oil hole. Sorry. Five. And six. And they are perfect. This little engine's gonna be wonderful. Y'all have a good weekend. Adios. <laughs>